Important to remember as we move quickly through this election interference hush money trial that there is more than one version of Donald Trump. There's what he projects to his base, the Donald Trump we're all familiar with, the one he desperately wants the world to see, in which he plays a victim of political persecution and political prosecutions, where he's defiant and self-assured. And then there's the other version, the private real one, without the mask. The same Donald Trump who admitted to AIDS he did indeed lose the election in 2020 and bemoaned, quote, how could I lose to this guy, before trying to violently overturn his defeat. The one who knew how deadly COVID was and that it was airborne, despite what he said to the American people. The one stripped of his bluster and vitriol. Both of those Donald Trumps are in court together this week, and as one of them gives fiery hallway speeches and lashes out against witnesses and the media, the other is forced to sit there and watch people he knows and knows describe in sometimes uncomfortable detail uh, an extramarital affair, hush money payments to a porn star. Joining our coverage is Mary Trump, clinical psychologist, the niece of Donald Trump. She's host of the Mary Trump Show podcast and author of the Substack. The good in us. Um, Mary, I've been dying to talk to you. I hang on to your every um, tweet and, and utterance on other programs. And I'm, I'm just dying to know what this is like for you to watch him face some accountability. Nicole, it's uh, something I despair that would ever happen. But um, I don't want to get too excited because this is early days. And Last week, we heard a lot about the split screen, uh, Donald Trump, criminal defendant in a New York City criminal courtroom, and then uh, the Supreme Court hearing arguments about whether or not Donald uh, should be immune from any kind of prosecution, uh, because apparently members of the Supreme Court thinks, think he's a monarch or something. Um, but I think the real split, split screen we need to think about is Donald Trump presidential candidate uh, for the Republican Party and Donald Trump, uh, anti-American authoritarian wannabe. And the problem is that we're seeing that these are being treated as two entirely different people. Uh, it's as if the fact that he is a criminal defendant, the fact that he has committed allegedly crimes against the United States of America have no impact whatsoever on his uh, relevance or his standing as a candidate for the presidency. And that I find really troubling because it seems that there's always a way out for him. There's always somebody willing to bail him out, uh, even if it looks like there's no escape. And that's what we saw last week. And I, I don't know, it worries me, quite honestly, that as deep the trouble is that he's in, it may not be enough. I mean, Mary, that's on us and that's in the framing. And it's unbelievable to me that on what, year eight or year nine? I mean, for me watching the trial, I remember all those news cycles. I sat with my then colleague, Brian Williams, the day Access Hollywood came out, the day he attacked Megyn Kelly, who moderated the debate. The day, I mean, I, I remember all these news cycles. And, and you're right, covering his trial as a thing happening to him and not who he is is on us. And I and I wonder what you make of the fact that he is now, I mean, I, I thought about this and about the journalism that drove the coverage of him in, in 16 and 17 and 18, that there's no investigative journalism that's gonna unveil just how autocratic he would be if he's reelected. He's saying it from the podium. He's saying it in interviews he agrees to do with Time Magazine. What is sort of the, the failure to, to sort of lock in and pay attention to what he's saying out loud? Well, this is this is a trend uh, that's been happening for decades now. Donald is incredibly good at pushing the envelope and pulling back in 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 those rare instances in which he gets pushback. Um, but usually, what happens is he pushes the envelope, he breaks norms, he defies expectations, and he gets away with it. So, being who he is. He pushes the envelope some more to see what else he can get away with. So he he normalizes outrageous, egregious behavior. So we are literally at the point, as you say, where we don't need to analyze or interpret anything. It's in black and white. He is literally saying, 
I am going to be an authoritarian. I am going to take away women's rights. I'm going to say anything I need to say in order to get back into power. And once that happens, I will not be stopped. And he has so much help uh, in this endeavor that um, I think it's even more crucially important that the fourth estate step up, because as we saw last week, the Supreme Court certainly is not going to. What advice do you have for running against him this time? I think that uh, it's pretty similar to the advice I would have had in 2020, which is he needs to be relentlessly mocked at every turn. Uh, we see in the courtroom that he's not handling the circumstances well. He's not handling uh, the confinement or the fact that he has no power in this space. Uh, and, and that's why uh, another reason last week was sort of demoralizing is because the Supreme Court gave him a much needed boost. Mm. Uh, so it would be so much better if he were just forced to wallow in uh, the consequences of his actions. We see him looking like he's falling asleep, whether or not he's falling asleep, he's complaining about the temperature. And, you know, something that, that I don't see being paid attention to, but it's really important, Donald Trump is there, trapped in that courtroom because of what he did. There are a lot of other people trapped in that courtroom as well because of what he did. He doesn't mm. seem to care uh, that they are also cold and tired and don't want to be there. So it's just another uh, example of how selfish he is and how he doesn't care about anybody else's circumstances, even if he caused them. So I think just hammering away on his weaknesses and his his frailty, and I mean that psychologically, um, the, the better it is because he's been allowed to skate for so long by pretending just because he, he yells louder and is, is more uh, forceful in his delusions and his mendacity uh, that he's somehow more fit.